Hello and welcome to Missed Takes, a show where we disprove movie goofs with a combination of quick wit and bullshit. I'm your host, Ryan. With me, as always, is my co-host, Eric. And our guest today is Jim. Now, on Missed Takes, what we do is every episode we take a single movie, we go through a list of movie mistakes, and it's up to us to explain why they're not mistakes at all within the context of the movie itself. And, of course, we're going to have tasty beers during it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now, uh, Eric, what's our movie today? Big Trouble in Little China, one of Carpenter's... Mm, oddest <laughs> movies. <laughs> so because we're doing Big Trouble in Little China, the beer we're having today is Imperial Smells Like Bean Spirit, the decadent version, from Microphone Brewing in El Grove Village. To Qingdai, boys. Qingdai. God of the East. Mm -hmm. And a big thanks to Microphone Brewing for letting us shoot in their awesome, awesome mm. tap room, again, in El Grove Village, Sick. Illinois. We like to come to these places because uh, they let us drink beer and be fools. Now... Um, before we get to the movie itself, or the, the mistake itself, I want to just talk about the movie. It's pretty fresh in our minds, right? So I just want to know what your, your hot takes are on, on having seen this movie recently. <laughs> well, you, if you watched it today, compared to when it was released in the 80s, you'd go in expecting something that smacks of racism, <laughs> or at least stereotypes. And you'd right. not be disappointed. <laughs> No, but the thing is, it doesn't feel malicious. It doesn't feel like you, you don't watch I, it going cringing. Here's the thing. I, 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 I took that note, too, and I think it's, it's, it feels like it should be, like, incredibly racist. But for some reason, it, it kind of works. I think part of it is uh, it's, it's not at the expense of, of the Chinese cast. For the most part, it's kind of like, like Egg Shen is the one who calls it Egg Fu Young Tours, right? Like, realistically, like, uh, it's... it's Jack Burton, that's the bumbling goofball hero. Right. I mean, arguably, Wang is the hero of the movie, and Burton's his bumbling sidekick. When, when, when shit really starts to throw down, Wang <clears throat> is the one that's definitely in the fight more yeah, so than Jack is. He's the one channeling what will become uh, Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat. Right. Burton is kind of stumbling so it's and posing. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, which, which more or less owes its entire existence to this film. That's true. And John claude Van Damme. Uh, and, and, and I would say that... that the, it's it's far more racist uh, towards poor Jack Burton and his bumbling um, Which whiteness. Is fine. Oh yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> they avoided that whole white no, savior thing by making him punch completely up, man. fucking in that punch up. Everything he um, yeah. uh, it's got Al Leong in it. Yep, oh. character actor extraordinary um, and badass. You, you have, you've kind of got an Al Leong thing going. I don't know if I ever mentioned that before, but uh, uh, only around huge, Halloween. Huge Al Leong fan. Um, Lightning, way op. Like. <laughs> I feel so bad for the, the two other storms because it's like being the ugly Hemsworth, you know? Like, like you're still pretty badass, but you're, you're the... He, he's still like a Dayton, Ohio 8, but like, since his brother, he looks like a fucking hobbit. Because, like, uh, uh, it's rain, right? That shoots the, shoot right. the... No, yeah, rain shoots the balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so his ability is he can hit you in the gut with an <laughs> adorable little and, nerf ball. And take a punch. Right, and, and Thunder um, can... Get big, he can inflate. <laughs> he basically oh, just has the power of anaphylaxis. Right, I'm allergic like, to oh shellfish. And then lightning just shoots motherfucking lightning and flies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and flies. Yeah, he, the other two definitely got the short end of the stick on the power spectrum for sure. Uh, brutal exposition in this movie. Just <laughs> brutal. It is exposition in the movie. <laughs> it and is. I didn't remember that. Like when I and I watched this as a kid, you know, I got kind of yanked in by the kung fu action and all the bright colors and all the fancy shit going on. But like watching it again as an adult, like knowing a little thing or two about the movie making process, I'm watching this just going. This she just like delivered like a half page long mm -hmm. chunk of dialogue explaining something that could have very easily been explained in context. But instead, we get this this block of dialogue that takes up <laughs> half the page explaining something in in grand minute detail. It's, every time someone talk like every time someone introduces or walks into a scene they tell you their entire backstory <laughs> like that's not how conversations work or somebody else says oh he's the new major d and a whole lot more like, yeah we, he looks like a used car salesman and he's wearing that check jacket and he never made her d's at any point in the entire film well i mean by that same token gracie law the lawyer the fact that she's a lawyer has nothing to do with the movie at all um except for the fact that her last name is law and i think carpenter thought that was funny and Tara slash Tara, because her name changes during the movie, um, <laughs> has nothing to do with this movie at all. Like, they, they, they introduce her in the beginning, that's why Gracie Law's at the airport, because she wants to give her a fair shake, right. right? Then it's like, you get back in that fucking room, and, and don't you come out for the rest of the she movie. disappears. And it's, it kind of reminded me of, like, you know, years later, The Room got all kinds of shit about, they bring up certain plot points, like, you know, uh, Lisa's mother's breast cancer. Never mentioned again, never mm -hmm. goes anywhere, never factors in. But this movie is somehow, for some reason, celebrated as this, like, kung fu classic. Well, I mean, if, if The Room featured more Chinese black sorcery, then yeah. I mean, both in San Francisco, no excuse for it not right, to. Right, right. Um, all right, so let's dig into the, uh, the movie mistakes, boys. All right. Love it. So, hit uh, me. 
this actually, so we're going to be jumping around continuity wise. That's okay. So does the that's fine. That's fine. The part where uh, Jack Burton gets is in the wheelchair. They're in Lopin's stronghold, and right. he gets kicked down that ramp in that wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Yes, and it stops at the edge of that well abyss. You know, right? I mean, everyone has a major right. abyss well. Yeah. Yeah. So wires and a hinge plate to hold the chair are clearly visible. Like. You know, for all the special effects, Carpenter was not clearly, you know, you know so, let that slide. So, um, but again, these are not mistakes. Yeah, not, no, not mistakes. That was, no, I mean, purpose. I'm, I'm sure to a casual viewer that looks like uh, a visible special effects, but we actually, are not casual viewers. We are not. Um, uh, I, martial arts require strenuous training. You got to always work out, right? You got to be, got to be fit. But it's not always easy to to get to a planned fitness, right? <laughs> To get to a fitness nineteen, so you kind of have to work around and create your own your own home gym. Now, and there's other parts of the film where you can kind of see where where that might come into play, but this specifically uh, is an ab workout where <laughs> when you're going to go blast your abs, you get in the wheelchair, you lean on the back of the well, pull yourself up, right? It's it's kind of biceps, kind of abs, so. but also by the same token. Um, you want the well there for um, for motivation, but mm-hmm. you don't actually want your your greatest warriors to fall into the abyss of doom. So really, it's more just like a, like a safety feature. So, so when you don't have a spotter, you have when you don't have a spotter, you have the wires and the plate. So it's, you're still doing the work, but it's just there. It's, it's just a safety feature for your so they, for your low pan home gym. So they forgot available to- now for ninety nine ninety five. <laughs> It's fairly obvious that, like, you know, Lopin cares about his people. He's got the storms in his employ. They care about him. Rain essentially commits suicide via anaphylaxis when he just sees that he's dead. So <laughs> it seems to me like in lieu of, like, OSHA, you know, there's probably some safety stuff built in. Like, you know, it's easier to just say, well, oh, watch out for the, the abyss. Watch out for the, the, the hole. Don't, don't fall in the well. So it's the Black so, Magic Safety Pact of, yeah, you know, of 1921. <laughs> he, just, he just built in some little safeguards so that in case somebody's wandering by the well and they're going to fall in, oh, nope, there's a, there's a little hinge there. There's a little safety catch for you. So, you know, it worked out kind of against his favor when it didn't kill Jack. But, I mean, I would, probably kept countless other employees alive. I would not be surprised if they introduced a character named OSHA. Like, and this is OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> OSHA then, fan. Like, just like the OSHA regulations, the factory, he goes away in the first 10 minutes of the film and you never hear from him again. <laughs> but, every, but once a year, he gets real pissy. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows up and starts pointing out shit that's wrong. Um, the White Tiger. Okay, that would be the brothel. That's the brothel. Yep. Okay. Um, what is up with the world's shittiest secret door? Okay. The world's most obvious secret door. Like, she goes and she touches the little thing and it slides away, but the fucking door is set back, like, 12 inches. How is that not just a poor design flaw? Well, because you're... Remember, you have half-naked women strolling around that building, mm-hmm. so if an employee knows about it, they've got a job to do and they know not to, you know, bite the hand that feeds them. Right. And some poor horny schlub that walks in is not going to really give two shits about an offset piece of wall. True. I guess they have better things to look at. Okay. Yeah, like a hey, Burton did in the, in the, in the lobby when, uh, you know, when someone in leopard print panties walked by <laughs> and he just, you know, it's like, oh yeah, mission. You know, he was, you know, so a, you know, a door like that, easily, easily forgiven. And besides that, brothels are all about artifice, all about creating an experience. You don't go to a brothel looking for love. You go to a brothel looking for what you go to a brothel looking for. So secret doors? The secret door. The secret door is uh, they want you to notice it. It's part of the experience. It's part of the sort of... I like, mean, I would argue you go to a brothel looking for secret doors. Doors, well, but yeah. only as a euphemism. They, they, yeah. <laughs> knock, knock. They want you to feel <laughs> like you're a part of some experience. And so, like, the sort of, like, the hidden door plays into that whole Eastern mysticism line of bullshit that, you know, they were trying to sell with all the actual merchandise. So, I think maybe they wanted people to notice it. It wasn't as much a secret door as they're sort of, like, selling no. this experience of, of, of an environment. Now I want White Tiger merch. Don't you? Uh, I, I do. do, too. Actually, I want the Dragon of the Black Pool <laughs> jacket. Like, I'm going to buy that jacket someday. <clears throat> so when Thunder is chasing after Jack and Wang, the color of his undershirt changes. So if we remember back to the 80s, those of us of I a do. certain age. I mean, so... I am old viewers, as fuck. Yeah, mm-hmm. Younger viewers go with us on this. This would have been right around the time on the West Coast when, if you remember those hyper-colored t-shirts... <laughs> I do. ...were just starting to kind of trickle out. They hadn't quite crossed the Rockies or Mississippi yet. But all fashion comes from the West Coast. Correct. Or like the or like or coasts, New York, yeah. Los Angeles, so, San Francisco. I'm just willing to bet that that was a prototype. So, of course, it didn't work quite as well as the stuff that we saw when we were in, like, maybe junior high. But but why he wears that, <clears throat> clearly, is it's, a, it's an early warning system because <laughs> he has, 
he has anger management issues. A little bit, yeah. And if he gets too pissed off, he explodes. So it's really, that's really just a, more, a warning for other people. Like, look, uh, thunder just went blue. So his body, his yeah. car temperature is going up a little bit. So he right. should change color. Back right. the hell up. Thunder, chill out. Unless you want to get covered in like the green gobbity gooey guts. Yeah. Like he also chops that poor dog statue in half for no reason. The man's got anger management issues. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, just he, when he's chasing away back and forth, and he just runs past that. He's like, fuck this thing in particular. Boom, thing. out of nowhere, he's just destroying antiquities because he's angry. A man really needs to get into a class and just start <laughs> like put a rubber band on the wrist or something just to kind of get that shit under control. He mm-hmm. does seem like someone who would you would describe at the office party as high strong. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so just a, a smidge. <laughs> you don't want to let him have more than a couple of drinks. <laughs> uh, so coffee. Please. When Jack and Wang are uh, rescuing the girls in the storage area, they use the same shot twice and one of the bad guys is kicked and lands on a table against a wall. Of course, they don't really use the same shot twice. That's what a casual viewer would think. Right. What actually happened? <laughs> that is just so, it's one of those things where I think this was part of the director's attempt at storytelling to sort of poke a little fun at the casual viewer. Hmm. Because one of the overriding stereotypes of that time, and indeed, even into the 21st century, is, yeah, they all look alike. Well, see, I don't know, can't use a director's choice. It has to be within the storyline <laughs> of the film. But it's so it's still though it is an effective allegory. Sort of building off what Eric said, I think uh, there was another goof that I noticed or that I well okay. No 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 we haven't solved this one yet. I'm not, okay, I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm not no, buying this. Ties in, this ties in there. All right. Right. All right. You know, true confession, I did I did look at some of the goofs on IMDb just to kind of get That's a sense fine. of maybe some things That's that I fine. missed. And there's another scene where like the same stuntman fights for both sides of the game in the original. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is I, I think this was a very sly commentary by John Carpenter, sort of against the China one child rule. I think maybe what he's trying to say was these were twins that had to come to San Francisco because their parents had twins and they couldn't make the Sophie's ah. choice of which one to, 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 to get rid of. So they weren't, you know, Asian people look identical, whatever. These two were actually twins, you know. They were twins and they came to, it was, it was a sly political social commentary on Carpenter's part to sort of protest that one child policy. Well, so, so to, to adapt that a bit, because again, yeah. we can't go with director choices right. here. Right. No, no, no commentary, I mean, no, uh, no director choices. It has to be within the narrative of the film. Correct, all right. So, but so if we're saying they're twins, which is fine, you know, yeah. a little brother, brother, brother. They had to brother come here, so one of them wasn't thing. killed in China. Right. Yeah. Um, then I would also say then, uh, then it's not the same stunt man that goes into the wall twice. By that same token, it's 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 maybe one twin ship uh, changed sides. So it's the two twins going into the wall. And the reason right. it looks almost identical is martial arts is very form based, right? So sure. you're doing the same repetitive motion. So. The way that kind of extrapolates into a fight is you would hit one guy, he'd fly into a wall, another guy comes up, tries the same form, you're going to do the same move. It worked last time. Yeah, same wall. You learn from the same master, Mm -hmm. you develop the same sort of thought pattern philosophy of your fighting style. Right. So it looks like same shot, it's actually two different twins and also, being punched in the same table on the same That came to America based on the one child policy. And, yes. You know, yeah. also, and maybe they land in different gangs as a civil war, brother against brother sort of thing, which explains the first instance where that happens. But yeah, they're, ooh, they're twins. Maybe and, one's a double agent. Ooh, ooh. Hiding inside the other gang is like an embedded <laughs> source. Or maybe, yeah. maybe it's kind of like when you like, you're twins and you like switch on your girlfriend to mess with her. Maybe you do that, switch on the gangs just to mess with them. <laughs> like, that's so funny. <laughs> Espionage within the Wing Kong. Like, you be Wing Kong today. <laughs> no, you be Wing Kong today. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, fine. T- t- today's Dim Sum Day at the cafeteria. <laughs> so fine. Oh, also, dude, I will join the- any gang for Dim Sum Day. <laughs> like, so, yeah, sure. Sounds good. Also, for the table. Uh, Where'd the white guy come from? He loves chicken feet. Just let him in. Yeah, yeah. just he's cool. He's good people. <laughs> so that table, though, also, lest we forget, this is taking place in Lopan's you know, domain, his mm-hmm. stronghold. Who's to say that that humble-looking table, while it doesn't have the glitz and glamour of like a neon wreath, you know, death statue, that's actually some sort of you know <laughs> esoteric, table. esoteric artifact that was just kind of shuffled in there throughout the years. Ooh, where actually, it, it reconstructs itself where it's like this was meant to be like the workbench of like a you know of this, a warlock. This almost goes with the secret door thing. Maybe Lopan's whole thing is. You throw the neon on the shit that doesn't matter, right? Because that's 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 the stuff that he bought it at IKEA uh, <laughs> like three weeks ago. But the actual mystical table that like had ancient weapons forged on it, he covered that shit in cobwebs. So people just walk right. This past shit it. was hand carved in the song damn, The hard. fucking skull is trimmed in neon because it's styrofoam. I just carved it with a blowtorch yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so don't destroy the table. But if you do, maybe you'll have a chance to come back. You know, we learned that lesson in the Raiders of the Lost Ark series when you know the plainest cup was the Holy Grail. It's sometimes the things that you don't suspect that are the most valuable. So, I mean, why did you just answer this? But that segues to another mistake, which is that when the statues fall over at the end, these gold statues are clearly mm. plaster. Yeah. Nope, you already hit on that. Anything that looks gaudy, you know, decadent, ostentatious, Ooh, decadent. those are 
Those are merely meant to distract and visually overwhelm anyone who is meeting Lopan. Lopan knows he's got all this stuff, you know, away from prying eyes where, you know, the public can't get to it. But walk in and it's like, oh, wow, all this gold ornamentation. It's destruction Holy thing. shit. So <clears throat> I've always thought that Lopan was kind of weird. Well, he is weird. <laughs> but I mean, like, that, that he's been looking for a, a girl with green eyes, a Chinese girl with green eyes for thousands of years. And they're like, well, we found a white chick. He's like, that's fine. But <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that, that works into his plan where, like, uh, Gracie La is the, the neon underworld of his plan. Like, yeah, no. Oh, I'm going to marry her. I hope you save her. Oh, I'm so worried. So it, Meow Yen was the plan all along. She was the neon distraction. So is he basically trying to not only hoodwink and distract Burton and Wang and Egg Shen, but also in a, in his own way, trying to almost double deal, you know, Ching Dai? Yeah, which is a really bad idea. Like maybe if you've been cursed for thousands of years, don't double deal Ching Dai God of the East. Just throwing that out there. You know, just as a warning to any cursed viewers we have. Live by your curse and, and right. go by the rules. The right? curse for a thousand years thing, it didn't look so bad. Like, the, the, that's, like I know this is not like a mistake, and, and it, but one of the, I didn't understand Lopan's motivation. It can be a lo logic flaws count as mistakes. Logic flaws, okay. I didn't understand. Maybe you guys can figure this up. This is one, okay, this is one thing I did write down. I didn't understand <laughs> Lopan's motivation. It's like he's, oh, gosh, no, I'm cursed. I, I'm 11 feet tall. I can float through walls, and I can make lightning with my hands. That's awful. I need to make myself mortal. Just some time to catch a fucking bowie knife in the face. Well, but see, Why would he go after, like, a mortal body if... if, if if it's something that can be destroyed. You've already answered this question, and you don't realize it. Okay, please enlighten me. Let's, let's say that you, uh, you are cursed. Okay? I'm cursed. And you, uh, you have no flesh and blood. You just are this glowing superpower being. Right? right. I love that person. <laughs> um, you're surrounded by dim sum all day, every day, and you can't oh. eat or taste it. Okay. After, maybe for a while you're like, okay, but I can shoot light out of my eyes. That's pretty sweet. I can float through walls. See, but after, after that three millionth bow goes by, you're like, fuck this. I need blood. So I, I wonder, need blood like, now. He's floating through walls. I thought that was maybe like an option. I didn't realize it was just like a default state. Like when he, okay, so I guess he touches me at the end of the one point and his hand goes right through her. So he has no corporeal material body that he can do anything with, like eat or well, I think, I mean, sex I think or go to the I think they're kind of going by like... Uh, Patrick Swayze ghost rule, like if you focus, you can kind of do it, but you're not going to focus your taste buds. I mean, you're like, like ooh. <laughs> and then your esophagus, and then your stomach, and then your and then, and then, and and then you have to focus the whole process, like the whole process, be like, ooh, i got to try really hard to digest, or a half-eaten bow falls out of your ghost ass. Like, you don't want that to happen. <laughs> so like, he was hoping to get would, a, a mortal body so he could experience earthly pleasures again, but he, he, he got it together just in time to catch a bowie knife in the face. Bad yeah, it's just, bad, just bad luck. That, you know, yeah, it's I'm all the reflexes. Almost feel bad for the guy. Not really. He is the villain. Well, he's you know. also one of the most floaty, pervy creepers ever <laughs> with the most particular tastes. You know, it's like, okay, wait. So he goes from waiting 2,000 years for a Chinese girl with green eyes. All of a sudden, here's Kim Cattrall with the same contacts. Ah, she'll do fine. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, just, it's like, good thing this dude obviously didn't have cable because if he was watching, <laughs> like, anything at late night, it just, you know, he could look at almost any Playboy or Penthouse, you know, model of the year and just go, yeah, grab her, get her, get her, get one of these, has got to work. <laughs> yeah. He's a bit, well, first off, it's really hard to watch TV when your lights are coming, when lights are coming out of your eyes. And the reception then, is super yeah, shitty, yeah, like 10 stories hard, underground. Well, he was see. able to look at those security monitors, ooh, which I will be circling back to in just a minute, ooh. in wheelchair form, so he can clearly understand and utilize <laughs> wheelchair form. 20th century technology, he understands the concept. <laughs> That's the worst form ever. <laughs> Take wheelchair <laughs> form! Oh! <laughs> but in the, so, <laughs> as a crude segue to that, you, crude segues are my favorite segues. So he comes out. It's his first encounter with uh, Jack Burton and Wang. He goes by. He looks. There is clearly a you know a bank. Just two security monitors. Just two. Right. Then he you know does the whole like questionnaire, like twenty questions, <laughs> you know, routine, yeah. and backpedals a little bit towards the elevator. And all of a sudden, there's an extra pair of security monitors. So he's gone from two to four in the space of 90 seconds. Well, so, uh, easy answer. Easy All right. Answer. So, so, um, so there are four monitors, right? Mm -hmm. the, the whole time. The thing is, he, he wants, he, he understands that Jack and Wang are going to expect to see monitors, but he wants to kind of hide his hand a bit, right? So he's actually using a bit of uh, Chinese black magic to cloud their eyes, basically, from two of them, so that they only know about two of them and don't know about all four. But then when he gets pissed off, it pisses me off to no end! When he gets, <laughs> when he gets pissed off, he kind of loses control, and then the illusion is, is broken. Okay. They see all four. So there were four the whole time, but he was trying to, like, you know, 
they wouldn't believe there was no security, so he's showing them a little bit, but you know, don't don't show them everything kind of thing. You but think if you're going to live to 2,000 years old, you might not be that prone to like spikes in blood pressure from watching television. But I, you know, maybe well, again, that's... he was dealing with Jack Burton, so he is a pretty infuriating asshole. <laughs> yes, oh, <Aww>, he's not. <laughs> well, he is the most noble of the JB characters, in my opinion. So you I think mean, about the, the James characters. Bond, Jason Bourne, you know, Ooh. Jack Burton. So oh. I mean, well, Jack Bauer, Jack Bauer. So let's look at it this way. All those guys, it's like, oh, for you know, for king, country, you know, for the flag, whatever, you know, save the world. John Bias. Yeah. <laughs> Burton, Burton saves the world, Jack arguably the universe, for about what two thousand dollars. That's that's a damn bargain, any way you look at it. Wait, no, it wasn't. Plus, it, it wasn't a triple or nothing, or, or nothing no, or triple, which is a weird reversal of phraseology, but like nothing, nothing or, or triple. So no, it was the nothing original or was like eleven hundred dollars. At the ending, it's four dollars. All right. So he walks out of there with just under like four grand. It's like thirty five hundred dollars. Still, for that's, a, I mean, that's, that's a that's a bargain. Yeah, bar, for, bargain for, for world the, savory. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, uh, when Jack shoots the lock off the first line of cages, his gun fires twice mm-hmm. before the first sound of gunshot is heard. Then at least three more times with only one gunshot heard. Well, he was pulling that trigger awfully fast. So, you know, as the story goes, you know, we just, you know, it was just one shot, but he right. actually pulled it so quickly. It, the well, report, he's just so, reflexes. Yeah, again, yeah, the reflexes. reflexes. He was just all the reflexes. He was just getting ahead of the sound waves of the actual shots. Uh, so I think I think it goes one step further because this is a gun he stole from a Wing Kong guy, right? Correct. So, well, clearly it was heavily modified because it was a Tech Nine, but it made it sound like a Mossberg twelve gauge. I mean, right. it was like boom, you know, it's just like, like it's a, the, the, the Tech Nine. Not that I'm an expert on firearms, but it's it's a uh, it's a semi-automatic handgun style with a long clip on it, and it makes kind of pop pop noises. But this thing, it just every time he shot it, it just reverberated throughout the entire subterranean um, factory. So I think it's because, again, uh, Chinese black magic might be the easy go-to here, but I think essentially uh, uh, the, the gun is enchanted, okay? An enchanted um, tech nine. An enchanted tech nine, uh, like you do. <laughs> and, and the bullets come out faster if you jerk your hand forward. Well, and, and, and I think, I think so. it's kind of like, like some of the, the, the bullets are literally stealth bullets. Like, like yeah. they're going to come out and not do anything. But also I think reflexes. Just he's so good. Yeah. Like that's, that's that's the shining thing for Jack Burton is he's just really fast. That's he has good reflexes. Yeah, that's reflexes, good. yeah, the reflexes. And eye coordination. Which, and I'm pretty sure everyone in this movie's up for like seventy two yeah. hours straight. Like it's yeah. a lot of night and day. Which is why this just, sort of magic potion that they take later on in the film sort of really helps them kind of clog through the home stretch because they really yeah, they're sleep deprived at that point. It's just it's, it's just Jaeger, right? That's just that's, just, that's, <laughs> that's just Jaeger. That's all it is. I feel invincible. Well, <laughs> so did I when I drank Artis- that shit yeah. in college. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's artisanal Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. I love Egg's whole thing because he's under no obligation. He feels no obligation to explain anything. Like like Ryan said, people walk into the room and they tell you their whole backstory. They spend like a half page of dialogue breaking down every single little thing that led them to that point. But then when they ask Egg how he got up the manhole, he's like, I wasn't easy. Just glasses right over it. You know? He's the one guy that feels no obligation to launch into half a page of exposition every time something crazy happens. Maybe that's, shows up maybe that's why he's like, shit, everyone else is explaining everything. Like, I'm the, the only source of mystery in this entire movie. Like, even when his introduction in the restaurant, when he's talking with uh, Uncle Chu, and he looks right at Gracie Law and does the whole thing about, you know, ram, you know, butts horns into bush and, you know, horns become entangled. Her reaction of just, I don't think I've had the play where it's just like, she is so lost. Right? He's just like, she's like, wait yeah. a minute. I don't think you understand. In Chinatown, everyone just says exactly what they're thinking all the time. <laughs> yeah. And he did. <laughs> You're very confused. <laughs> Why are you, like, scrying with, like, yeah, chicken yeah. bones and shit? You're supposed yeah. to announce every single just, thing that happened in the last five just minutes. Just tell us the entire history of the Wing Kong exchange <laughs> in every conversation. Um, when the bus is leaving, after, the, after they escape uh, the first time, um, the guards shoot the shit out of the bus. Mm-hmm. And then um, a second later, in the next shot, the bus is totally fine. Come on, that's Egg's bus. You really think he isn't going to be, you know, laying some magic down on that thing to keep it safe, to keep him safe? Ooh, so... so uh, Again, I'm gonna go with illusion. I'm gonna say bus illusion, mm-hmm. right? So, so kind of offset a bit. So the guards are shooting up this illusion bus, and they're seeing the shit being shot. And maybe Egg's letting like a little bit of the illusion trickle in because you see them hiding. Because same thing, he wants the people to get down just in case. But yeah, his bus is fine. That's his livelihood, <laughs> yeah. right? You're not getting a fucking bullet into my bus. <laughs> he whipped some ancient Chinese black magic force field shit on that bus a long time before he ever got into driving it. Um. So Jack says uh, that he's, that Lopan has light coming out of his mouth, right, when he's complaining about uh-huh. it. Uh, realistically, he saw the light out of his eyes first, and that blinded him. He never saw the light coming out of Lopan's mouth. So okay, when you, you know? Okay, the, the camera was not on Jack when it was because we were, had to get that peach shot, the, the, that shot of Lopan with all the 
magic coming out of his face. So we didn't see Jack over hanging out next to his truck. When you see something you've never seen before, whether it's like, you know, a, a prostitute in leopard skin panties or it's like a green ball of fire in the sky, you peek through your fingers. I mean, he was, you know, the, the continued exposure to the light is what actually brought, not the initial salvo of the light coming out. It was him peeking through his fingers that, that actually did it. We didn't it's see like, it. It's like staring at a clip. You just, yeah. you got to do it. Like, you know yeah. you're not supposed to, but you do it anyway. You know, and then lucky for him, it was like a, a, a stagnant puddle of, of rainwater that's better than any ophthalmology appointment to like get that shit out of his eyes. But like, I think he, he, was, he was speaking through his fingers. We didn't see it because the camera wasn't on him at the time. I, I also, I think you, you've accidentally answered one of your own questions Probably. Uh, from earlier, which is you were wondering why would a low pan uh, give up this awesome super powered life? But so far, it seems like his big powers are face magic and wheelchair form. So I think maybe <laughs> if those were my two and, big go tos for face magic and wheelchair form, eh, like, well, might, that, I'm like, I'm good. It might be I'm kind good. of nice to float through walls, but to have to would be probably be a, a giant bit. Also, not, let's, lest we forget the uh, the ghost creeping on catatonic women. Not cool. I mean, no. you know, immortality aside, I mean, that's... that's it's one a, thing to peek in a window, but it's another thing to, like, actually feel their breasts from the inside when they're asleep. <laughs> well, and I think, I think in the modern era, you know, like, maybe he'd get away with creepy, pervy ghost floating back in the day, but now people are not going to stand for that shit. In the post-Me Too world, perfect ghost floating, <laughs> breastfeeling from the inside, ghost form, as opposed to wheelchair form, is not going to fly. Yeah, not in 2019. So remember that. Um, anything else, boys? One last one. <clears throat> so, the, the wedding ceremony. Yes. Yeah. In the underground neon skull dungeon. Yeah, in the... Wedding uh, chapel. Yeah, in, in the... What could possibly be the greatest food court that never was. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he's able to hold, not only hold a needle, but also grab Miao Yin's wrist before his curse is lifted. Isn't um, the whole point of the ceremony is to get the curse gone so he can, like, touch shit? <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I would think uh, two things. One, I think we can go a little bit by the Patrick Swayze ghost rules sure. and the focus thing. But I think also, um, I, because the ceremony's kind of started, like, it's, 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 it's nascent. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So I, think, so I think maybe, maybe that's like a, like a little, like, Ching Dai, like, tease. Like, it's like, hey, like, I want you to go through with this, right? So, so once you're getting close, I'll give you a little something-something. To help you get through, like, you know, here's a little taste. Like, first one's free. You get it, you know. <laughs> the Ching Dai corporeal tease. <laughs> last, last time somebody told me the first one's free, there was also a needle involved. Um, so. I'm not going yeah. to invent a sex move called the Ching Dai corporeal tease. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty exciting. It involves though. feeling breasts from the inside. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It's, it's hard, but it works. Uh, so I think we've uh, managed to prove that Big Trouble Little China is a flawless movie. So Perfect in every way. Well done, boys. Cheers. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, oh, get, well. get a bit left. Get a bit left. Uh, and in the meantime, remember, there are no mistakes there are no mistakes. There we go. Try that again. There are no mistakes, only mistakes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.